What's up you guys? It's Tyler from the Harrington's and we're back today with a brand new video. If you're a wedding filmmaker, you know that there goes a ton of footage that you capture throughout the year. Managing all this data can be tricky for a few reasons. Not only do you need to make sure that it's backed up and safe in case of a hard drive failure or something like that, but you also need a system that is fast enough for you to edit off of. Even if you manage all of that throughout the year, now you've reached the end of the year and everything is delivered and out the door. The question becomes, well, now what do you do with all this footage? Do I delete the footage? Do I just buy a bunch of new expensive hard drives and start fresh every year? What's the solution? Well, over the past five years, I've developed a system that tackles these video specific issues and I think is pretty awesome. In this video, I'm gonna talk with you about my entire hard drive system process that I use for editing and archiving throughout the year, but then I'm also gonna show you what I do at the end of every year to make space for the new year coming up. So let's jump right into it. I just wanted to mention here that I'm including a link in the description of this video that has links to all of the hard drives that I use, all the different stuff I use if you wanna pick them up for yourself. If you do decide to pick up any of this stuff, using those links is a huge help to me as I get a small kickback from your purchase and it's highly appreciated. All right, so for this system to work, you do need a few key elements. The investment for the system is pretty heavy up front, but I think it will save you money in the long run. So I'm gonna walk you through the basics of how the system works and talk about the specific products I use in this setup. So the first thing that you need is a pair of fast drives that are identical. These are gonna be your editing drives. Now for me, I use two four terabyte Western Digital MyBook drives, but you can use portable hard drives if you work from a laptop or really kind of anything that you want. This is where you're gonna store all of your active projects. So anything that hasn't been delivered to a client goes on these drives. You need two of them because you're gonna be making an exact mirror of one of them just in case you have a hard drive failure. The next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a mass storage drive for some kind. I personally use a Drobo, but you could use any type of a RAID system. Synology is another popular one that I suggest looking into. And this is where you will archive all of your projects once they have been delivered. These drives are a little too slow to edit directly off of, but they can store a ton of data. So my Drobo is equipped with five drives that gives me about 10 terabytes of storage while still allowing one drive that is blank at all times, which gives me that redundancy I need in case of a drive failure. I think of this drive as my archiving drive. I have access to the footage and files whenever I need them, and I know they are safe because of the redundancy, but it's, again, not really fast enough to edit off of, so it's just great for storing a ton of that data. And then the last thing you're gonna need is a hard drive toaster of some kind. I don't know if that's the official name, but that's what I call it. And then you're gonna need a set of bare desktop hard drives. You can get the toaster on Amazon. Again, check the link in the description. I don't really know the official name, um, but this is what you're gonna use to archive everything at the end of the year and put it into what I call like long-term archive. Okay, so let's talk about how this whole system works together. So you come home from a wedding and you dump all of your cards, all of your footage onto editing drive number one. Uh, I use a specific file structure for every single video project that I work on and later you'll see why. So I set up a root folder with the name of the couple and then I make six folders. I do this for every single project. The first one is footage. The second one is project. The third one is audio. The fourth one is effects and stills the fifth is export, and the sixth is for pluralize. If you want more information on this, file, on this file structure system, you can check out the video I made specifically for that. I'll link that in the description as well. So this drive is connected directly to your computer, which allows it to be really fast and you can edit directly off of it. Now, if you want extra speed, you might wanna look into something like a solid state hard drive to use for your editing drive or something like that. But remember, you're only storing footage on here from current projects that you're working on. So you don't need the biggest drive in the world, but you wanna make sure you have one big enough to hold any of the backlog footage you might run into during peak wedding season. Okay, so now all your footage is on editing drive number one. And then I use a program called Chronosync that is set up to run in the background and will automatically mirror your editing drive number one to editing drive number two. Now I have mine set up to run once a day, but you can have it set up to run more often if that would make you feel more comfortable. Now, if you're running this on a desktop where both drives are plugged in at all times, it's super easy because you can set it and forget it. It will automatically copy over in the background. Now, if you're using a laptop, you need to remember to plug in the second drive in order to initiate that mirroring sequence. Now, the reason we wanna mirror the drives is for redundancy. You want your footage to always be in two places in case of some sort of a failure. We're only ever gonna really use and access editing drive number one with editing drive number two being a fail safe in case of a hard drive failure. 
Okay, so now your wedding is on two identical editing drives and you're rocking and rolling and you've edited the entire wedding and you've delivered it to the client. Perfect. So now the next step is you're gonna move this entire project folder over to the Drobo. So you're gonna take that root folder with the couple's name and you're gonna drag it onto your Drobo or your, your big archiving drive. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, but you wanna make sure that you have some sort of a folder system over there that you can have broken down to, so you'll know where everything is. Now once you've confirmed that that project is safely on the Drobo, you can go ahead and delete it off your editing drive, leaving more space for new projects as they come in. All right, so here comes the really unique part of this system. So eventually, no matter how much capacity you have in your Drobo, it's gonna eventually fill up, right? And the question always becomes, well, now what? Do I buy a new Drobo? Do I keep investing in bigger hard drives to expand my storage? What do I do? Well, I found a long-term archiving solution that I love, and this is where I use those bare hard drives and that toaster that I talked about before. So at the end of every year, basically what I do is I cl clean off my Drobo completely. I take all of my video projects from the entire year, weddings, blogs, personal projects, literally everything, and I transfer it onto two identical bare desktop style hard drives. Now these are relatively cheap because they don't come with any sort of a housing, they don't come with anything like that, and you can get them in pretty big capacities, which is really nice. So I take that entire folder, my entire 2016 folder of all my video stuff, and now I have two identical hard drives with all of the files from the entire year on them. Right, I store one drive in a plastic case and I keep it on a bookshelf in my office. And the other one gets stored at a friend's house. And I just keep it at a friend's house in case of like a fire or theft or something crazy like that that would happen to my like personal archive set. Um, I always have a backup copy somewhere else. So once I have both of those bare hard drives, safely stored, I can go ahead and delete everything off of my Drobo, right? So now I'm left with an empty editing drives, an empty Drobo, and I'm completely ready to take on all the projects from the next year. I had a bride email me just this week from two years ago saying that she had some glitches in her files and that she hadn't noticed it before and she was wondering if I could re-export it and send it to her. Now, I was simply able to grab the 2014 hard drive off of my bookshelf, plug it into my toaster, and access her writing right there, export it and send it to her. It was really that easy and I don't know any of a other kind of system that would give you the quick access like that, but also being able to still work with all your current stuff without having to buy really expensive hard drives every single year. I also think that this system is going to save you money in the long run. By investing in two fast editing drives and one nice RAID drive setup up front, you know these are gonna last you for years and years, as opposed to having to rebuy these things every single year and buying new fast hard drives and new big RAIDs every single year. The only drives that you really need to purchase on a consistent basis are gonna be those bare hard drives, and those are by far the most affordable of all the different drives that you could have to buy. All right, so there you go. That is my entire hard drive system I use for editing and archiving my wedding films. Again, all the different equipment I talked about will be linked in the description below, so make sure you go check that out. Um, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Now, if you have any questions about anything at all, please leave it in the comments. I love answering guys' questions in the comments, so don't hesitate to ask anything in there. I seriously love answering the questions. So thanks, you guys. This has been Tyler from The Harringtons, and I'll check you in the next one.